Hello candidates and welcome back to my channel. For those who don't know, my name is Michaela. I'm the content creator behind CandidKayla.com and today I'm going to be breaking down the different sources of military educational benefits for dependents. going to be breaking them down today. I'm going to give you a bit of an overview and then I'm going to be talking to you guys about how to actually maximize your educational benefit. I feel like these are two very separate videos so I'm going to be just really giving a brief overview of both and the detailed information will be in the blog post linked below. Both of the blog posts associated with today's video are super packed with information. I have left links and all types of things in the actual blog post um, as well as underneath some of them are underneath this video, but the majority of them are in the actual blog post itself. So there are multiple military educational benefits as a whole, but today I'm going to be just focusing on the ones that are specifically geared towards dependents or that could be transferred to dependents. Dependents not being spouses, but dependents being children. Now there are multiple opportunities for spouses that are not opportunities for children. And so because of that, I'm going to do a completely separate post for military spouses. So the first military educational benefit I'm going to be talking about is the 9-11. GI Bill. So this is the most common educational benefit that I've seen for dependents in that a parent can transfer their educational benefits to the child through the 9-11 GI Bill and what the 9-11 GI Bill pays for is it will pay for your entire public school tuition. If you go to a private school it'll pay just under $25,000 a year in tuition. It'll cover your tuition and fees as well as giving you a thousand dollar book stipend. It will pay you monthly the E5 rate depending on the zip code for your university. This is a benefit that I took advantage of to go to undergrad the last three years of undergrad actually. My dad was kind enough to transfer me his 9-11 GI Bill and I was paid a check based on the area in which I live. That check at the time was $1,557 a month. I think that went up my second year and then it stayed the same my second and third year if I'm not mistaken uh, for price but the value does go up every year based on the inflation increase that everybody gets because it goes off the e5 rate it, you will get an increase every year but it's very slight it's nominal and we will get to how to actually maximize that benefit in just a second the last three benefits I want to talk about are specifically to children of people who are disabled at 90% or higher and or are children of prisoners of war. The first I actually have not used but it's called the Fry Scholarship. The Fry Scholarship will afford you full payment of your tuition and fees as well as a $1,000 money stipend and a housing allowance based on the military E5 rate the same that type of situation that you would have for the nine, post 9-11 GI Bill. However, the cap for the tuition and fees payment is $25,162.14 a year. So it's about $1,000 higher than that of the post 9-11 GI Bill. Both the Fry Scholarship and the 9-11 GI Bill both offer benefits for 36 months total, which means you will only have four years of schooling paid for. So you're going to need to wrap it up and finish up in four years. Each state has their own educational benefits for veterans as it relates to 90 to 100 percent permanently and total disabled veterans and their dependents. And because I live in the state of Virginia, what happens is they have something called VMS VEP or Virginia Military Survivors and Dependents Educational Benefits or Educational Program, I think. And what this program does is it will pay for all of my tuition and fees for eight semesters, as well as taking care of the cost of books up to $950 a semester. So the last and final educational benefit I will be discussing today is Spouse and Dependent Educational Assistance, or DEA for short, or Chapter 35. And what that does is that offers you a check for what used to be 45 months if you've already started using your benefit, but now it's 36 months of entitlement to $1,224 of eligibility. This value implies that you are in school 
full time and all of the rates that I've discussed in the past are all contingent upon you being full time. If you are part time, you will not get the full stipend amount. If you have two parents who are permanently and total disabled, they will not add those benefits together. So just keep that in mind. So as I stated at the beginning of this video, all the links to each of those benefits will be left in the description box below. They typically have a questionnaire or a list of qualifications to see if you qualify for each of these benefits and definitely do some research. When in doubt, just go to the GI Bill Ask a Question section. So what you will do is you will sign up for an account and you will ask them a question and they will be able to tell you your eligibility as well as the specifics of your personal benefit if you have questions. So let's get into the juicy details of this video, how to maximize your educational benefits. So I have talked on this channel many times about how I bought a home at the age of 22 and my military educational benefits had a lot to do with that. And for a lot of people, if you set yourself up and put yourself in the right situation, you can use your military educational benefits to catapult you into a world that is unheard of. You will already be ahead of the average American in that you won't or shouldn't have come out of school with any student loan debt but then you will be able to put yourself in a predicament where you can live a lifestyle and or acquire extra income that maybe the average peer of yours would not have. So the first thing that I want to preface before getting into these tips is that there's a couple things in particular that you can do right off the gate that's across the board, regardless of if you have military benefits or not. If you're going to college, you can do the following things to set yourself up for success. The first is to actually just move in with your parents and to go to school relatively close to your parents if that's an option for you. The second thing is for you to choose your school wisely. Ivy League universities typically cost significantly more per class than the average state university. Private schools as well cost significantly more than public universities. And as a result, you want to make sure that you weigh out those options wisely. First of all, because all of the benefits that I've just offered to you all pay public school tuition in full and only pays partial for private school tuition depending on the cost. Also, they do have something called the Yellow Ribbon Program, but not all private universities are involved and use the Yellow Ribbon Program. Again, the link to the Yellow Ribbon Program and how that would help you is in the description box below if you do choose to go to a private university. So getting right into these tips, the first thing I would say to do to maximize your military education benefit actually starts before you ever go to college. When you're in high school, I would take full advantage of free college incentives. That includes, but is not limited to, AP, IB, dual enrollment, CLEP test, DSST exams, all of the above. If you can get a class for cheap or free, do it. It will definitely make up in the long run a whole lot more capital and give you a lot more freedom. In my case, when I was in high school, I took AP classes and I was also dual enrolled. I also did a CLEP test and all three of these helped to secure once I got to the community college level and ultimately the four-year university level, freedom and flexibility so that I didn't have to worry about actually using my benefit to pay for those classes. Three very important caveats to this point. The first is make sure that you speak with the advisors or the registration office at the four-year university that you plan on transferring to. Universities will only take a certain level of transferred credits. The rest will not apply to your graduation, so choose wisely. Second, make sure that you're strategic about what classes you AP, CLEP, etc. out of. The second thing I want to talk about is try to pr actually pursue your associate's degree. In Virginia, which is where I live, an associate's degree puts you in a different wheelhouse when it comes to transferring to your four-year university. A lot of the universities will waive all of the gen ed credits if you have an associate's degree. So keep that in mind. Also understand that if you have an AP credit or something like that, the standards for getting credit at the community college level to go towards an associate's is typically lower than that for a four-year university depending on where you go. So for example, I took the AP exam in high school and I got a three on the AP exam for calculus, which is not acceptable at the four-year university, but it definitely counted towards 
my math credit and exempt me from any sort of math placement or anything like that at the community college level and ultimately work towards my associate degree. So get credit where you can and have those credits actually be useful. The last thing is take advantage of any university testing options that are possible. So I have a friend and she went to the university, told them that she had already taken a course and that she wanted to test out of. All you have to do is kind of really work with the university, see if they have a testing policy or something like that. And what that will allow you to do is it will give you credit for the course through the school without having to actually take the class while you just pass. Usually it's a final exam or something like that. The second way to maximize your educational benefits is to participate in grants, scholarships, paid internship, pathway programs, all of the above. So the fact of the matter is, when the military and the VA is paying out your educational benefits, any money that's already on your account lands in your pocket. Yes, honey. If you did not know, let me give you the tea. <sighs> tea, okay? Any money that's already applied to your account will land in your pocket. I can give you a bit of an example from my predicament. I am using a state-funded educational benefit as a result of my parents' disability rating. And as a result of that being applied to my account, as well as the scholarship slash assistantship that I already have that pays my tuition, I get my tuition back in a refund check every year. And this refund check is the money that just goes in my pocket. Nobody can take it from me. It is taxed, unfortunately, under the new tax code. But prior to the new Trump tax code, it was actually untaxed. So all I can say, guys, is it's free money and take full advantage of the free money. Also, fill out your FAFSA. If you receive the Pell Grant or free money through the FAFSA program, will you get it back as a refund? And this is done on a school by school basis. So this goes back to choosing your school wisely. I would actually call the four-year university before ever arriving. If you know that you may qualify for some FAFSA benefits, call them and ask them how they deal with that situation because there's no reason as to why you should not get that money in your pocket. The state is going to give them that money regardless or the federal government is gonna give them that money regardless. So you should be able to put that money in your pocket because it is rightfully yours. The third way you can maximize your educational benefit is actually primarily to the 9-11 GI Bill or the Friar Scholarship, but it's to take as many classes as you can and take whatever you want to take. So the difference between the 9-11 GI Bill and the other types of educational benefits that I mentioned before is that the 9-11 GI Bill will pay for anything up to a certain amount. It doesn't matter if it's degree seeking or not. However, the Virginia Military Education Benefit as well as the DEA Benefit both require that they be degree seeking courses only. And so because of that, I can't take any courses at the PhD level that I might wanna just take. So as a transfer student going into the four year level, this actually worked to my benefit a lot. For the chemistry program at my school, it was done one class at a time. Until you actually took a class and passed that class, you couldn't move on to the subsequent classes. And as a result of that, I would have been left not being full time the first year, year and a half. So because of this, I was able to pick up random classes that I felt just filled on my schedule so I would be full time. And something that was really important that was taught to me when I first got to the university, is whatever you're interested in, you take that until you get a C. So work your way up through the ranks until you get a C. What this allows you to do is this makes you a more well-rounded and diverse individual. And it also gets you accustomed to things that may change the trajectory of who you are. In my case, the math courses changed the trajectory of my entire career. I went from just wanting to be a benchtop chemist to now being a computational chemist, being at the intersection and learning things about computer science, math, and chemistry, and learning how to weave all those together with physics and make it into something beautiful. So had it not been for the 9-11 GI Bill paying for whatever courses I felt like taking, I wouldn't have had that opportunity. Also, take advantage of any sort of consortium or things like that that you may have. The 9-11 GI Bill, as well as some of the state benefits, I know for the Virginia military state benefit, they will actually pay for courses at two different universities concurrently, meaning that if it's going towards your degree and you are taking it, then they will pay for you to, even if it's cheaper, they will pay 
for you to take a class at another university. Also, understand that a lot of times consortiums have cheaper prices. So this allows you to pay the cheaper prices, get more bang for your buck, and actually work around all the transfer foolishness. Number five, this goes kind of without saying, but pass all your classes the first time. As somebody who has had to retake classes in the past, I've actually had to take retake one class in particular multiple times, and it was a struggle for me, y'all. Don't judge. Judge yourself first. Don't take old Kim before you want to judge me. But if you're not going to pass it the first time, fail it so you don't owe the military money back and pay for it a retake out of your own pocket. So not everybody has this luxury, but I definitely did. And I would tell you to do it this way again and again and again. Owing the VA money back is a heart wrenching process. It is awful, it is grimy, and it is very poorly done because they're so poorly organized over there. So as a result, it's going to mess with your money. So rather than allowing it to mess with your money, just flunk the class and pay for the retake out of your own pocket. When you pay for it out of your own pocket, especially if it's a lower level course, you could probably get it for cheaper through another university, as I've described in the previous points. Number six, Stretch your benefits as wisely as possible. So these are just, again, blanket tips that I talked about in the beginning, that if you could stay home, stay home. If you can have a roommate, get a roommate. If you could stay off campus, even better, because dorm housing is extremely expensive for no reason. If you can opt out of the meal plan, do so. If you can leverage some of your benefits, such as being at a university that's close to a commissary, or however you call the shopping center on base. Um, because you will be using your educational benefits, you still have access to your ID card, take full advantage of the discounted prices on base. The discounted gas, all of the above, if you're relatively close to something, do it. It's so worth it. Take advantage of social programs. So food banks, church organizations, get you a job that will actually pay you on the job to eat or that will offer you food, free food that you don't have to pay for. Take advantage of the school incentives. Amazon Prime has Amazon Prime student. Take advantage of any sort of military discounts for the things around you. I know some rent and apartment places have military incentives and things of that nature. And number seven, the most important key is for you to budget, budget, budget. Let me tell you one more time. Budget your cash. Regardless of if you're in college or not, budgeting, I swear by it. I tell everybody about it. I have multiple videos on this channel, multiple blog posts about it. It's very simple. Maximize your income while minimizing your expenses. If you don't have an opportunity to do any of the prior six things that I just mentioned, utilize the benefit and the opportunity that you've been given by knowing how to budget your money. Understand that you have things that you're going to have to pay for and things that happen. For example, your military check comes a month late, which means that at the start of every school year, you will always have 30 to 45 days where you do not have a check and you are still expected to have books and everything in between. So try to stay on top of your budget. Make sure that you have money rolling over from the year prior or from a job that you worked going into college or something like that to ensure that you can cover the upfront cost before the military reimburses you the money back or until your checks start coming. Just really be creative about how you leverage the opportunity and the benefit that you have, but do not squander it. At the end of the day, that's how you can maximize your military educational benefits. Do not squander it. Understand that there are people who would die, literally die, because people join the military and they get sent off to war and they die for the position that you are in. So do not squander your parents' sacrifice, your sacrifice, or the sacrifice of those who are fighting on behalf for you to have this benefit. Use it to the maximum of your ability so that you can not only leave college with no debt, but leave college knowing that you did exactly what you needed to do, how you needed to do it, and put yourself in such a position that you can go out and change the world and change your own life with respect to your peers. So if this video was helpful to you guys, please like, comment, and share. Um, also subscribe to the channel if you guys are interested in more videos like this. I have videos that come out twice a week about all of the eight different types of wellness. We do have consecutive blog posts three times a week 
over on our blog. So again, the link to the blog is in the description box below, as well as all of the links to each of the benefits that I've discussed today, as well as how to maximize them. Both of those blog posts are linked in the description box below. Thank you guys so much for your time. And until next week, goodbye.